All right, good morning, everyone. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, welcome to the uh, WatchGuard eSecurity Solutions MFA webinar. Um, let me, you know, a few housekeeping things. Uh, there's a questions box down there. If you have questions, you can answer them into there. We will uh, answer those either uh, throughout the presentation or at the end. Um, so please take advantage of that if you have any. Um, potentially, you can use the chat box. We'll try to monitor that as well. Um, appreciate everybody uh, dialing in today. And, you know, we know this is a difficult time and for you to spend uh, your precious time today looking at this, um, what well, we appreciate it. And, and of course, the reason this is an important topic is, is because of what's going on in the world today. Um, so that's, that's why we're talking about security, right? Uh, let's see if I can get to my second slide. Here we go. Um, so today we're looking at a new normal, right? Everybody's talking about the new normal. I kind of already hate the word uh, or the phrase because you hear it so darn much. Um, but, you know, starting with COVID-19, we ended up uh, migrating as many people as we could to work from home. Um, and you can just send people home if you need to. But uh, the reality is um, uh, people have to work from home. They have to access data in the cloud. Um, you know, whether it's at your location or at your data center or at a uh, remote data center like AWS, um, there, uh, we also have to uh, uh, take uh, into consideration that data could be uh, downloaded to the house, uh, to their homes, which it will be, and potentially even stored locally. Um, and then we're going to be using more and more applications that are in the cloud and, and then moving your employees to the home reinforces the fact that they're using applications that are not in your control. And if the applications are in the cloud, the data is in the cloud. So you've got your data all over the place, uh, people working remotely. And um, if we ever had any sense of control, we've pretty much lost it. Um, so the new normal, what does the normal, normal mean? Well, it's causing companies, um, uh, we already talked about that, that the complete return to normal. So things will never completely return to normal. That's the, that's probably the second point here. Uh, it can, it's one thing to say we have it, but is it going to change? One, I think all of us can imagine that's, that we're going to probably end up with more people working from home longer term, um, even after this pandemic. Um, and it's not going to be an on off light switch, right? We're not going to have people that, uh, work from home today and then tomorrow everybody's going to go back to work. It's just not going to happen. So we have to deal with a different world where, um, uh, the security implications that come from working from home is a permanent risk, not a short-term risk. Now, you know, what are the increased risks that we're going to experience? Um, first one is we have to be able to authenticate remote workers, right? We have to know who's logging into your data, your uh, remote applications, um, to their remote workstations. Uh, that's number one, because without, without authenticating and guaranteeing that the people that are logging in are the ones that should be we have no security uh, control at all. Um, secondly, we have to secure the homes and we have to secure these homes at same or similar levels to what to the office or to your data centers, which prior to making everybody move to home, that certainly was not the case. I mean, there's probably a ton of people working from home right now with, with D-Link routers and they're not even firewalls. Um, and, and, and who knows what they've got on their workstations. So, you know, the, uh, we have to, they, the homes need to be at the same level as your office, your data centers, and your cloud applications, which hopefully are, are being secured right now. And you know, I would say a lot of, for a lot of companies, we have no visibility on even what cloud applications are being used right now. Forget whether or not they're secure. <clears throat> so that's really going to increase priorities for, um, for these areas of security, right? Number one is securing the home office as, as though, it's a remote office, um, making sure we have uh, firewalls, uh, strong endpoint security, um, potentially other types of security, certainly MFA or uh, you know uh, access control. Uh, cloud application security is a second area. We need to make sure that the applications themselves are A, known, meaning you have visibility in what's being used, and B, that uh, we know that they're secure. Uh, the third area would be secure communications, right? Secure what they normally call a VPN, 
um, but some type, some type of, of, of virtual private network that's secured and encrypted has to be in use. A third area would be data security. Uh, with data all over the place, how is that data being secured? Is it um, is it encrypted in some way? Is it uh, is there are there restrictions on where the data can move? Are, are there restrictions on who can access it? Um, backup and disaster recovery. Um, you know, with people accessing data from anywhere, the chances for some kind of a disaster or loss of data or or actual accidental delete deletion. All those things are becoming, I think, even more real. Security monitoring is another thing, right? If you have people working from all kinds of locations now, I mean, hundreds and maybe thousands of locations, how are you going to know what's going on? So it's you really need this. It escalates the need for overall security monitoring within an organization, you know, like like uh, uh, like an MDA, uh, MDA type or MDR type solution with detection and response, um, you know, with uh, in large organizations, that means a SIM, that means um, um, having uh, d devices, security, appropriate security all over, and that those devices are feeding in that information. You need to be able to monitor who's accessing from where. All those things need to be integrated into a bigger picture. Um, and then the last one is, you know, the, today's topic, which is MFA, um, which is a, a big, big focus, and it's really the number one area you need to focus on is if you don't secure and know who's logging in, you have no control. So, you know, why is MFA? Uh, why use MFA? Well, because first of all, a very high percentage of breaches are caused by stolen credentials. Once your credentials are out there in the wild, um, the rest of your security is kind of moot, right? Um, uh, a second one would be stolen passwords um, give, a, uh, give give attackers unabated access, right? So we're talking about uh, your uh, bankroll accounts, your bank accounts, your payroll, your HR, almost everything going online, again, with all of those cloud applications that people are using. Um, again, security is irrelevant without without access control. Um, regulations, if anybody cares about regulations, well, more and more of our customers do care about security regulations. Re security regulations require strong ID management and access control. So intellectually, you need it. From a regulation compliance point of view, you need it. But in reality, you need it for all the practical reasons. Um, and passwords, as we know, are being reused by by a very high percentage of, of users. I mean, it's almost we need passwords for so many things. It's almost impossible not to reuse them. But if you use something like uh, like an MFA type solution or in a password um, uh, storage and management solution, you can minimize the number that are redundant, and you can store them securely, and then you can access people with multiple factors. So uh, the use cases. IT administrators and logins for IT administrators, websites, um, both administration, portal users, and uh, web application access. Uh, cloud applications themselves, I mean, every single cloud application that your company uses should have multi-factor authentication. Um, uh, I, I, we personally have had our payroll service hacked at one point where the credentials somehow got out there in the wild and people were trying to put in um, new accounts that were going to be paid for my payroll. So this was like, for us, it was like 10 years ago, but it still is one of, you know, it's a horror story when, in, when somebody, you find somebody gets access to your, your credentials and something that's that important or a bank account or something. I mean, the types of things that can happen are, are crazy. Networking login, the network login itself into your network. Um, and then remote access, which is really the topic for today as the focus topic is working from home. Um, and making sure those people log in are the right people. So <clears throat> last, last piece of information on that is um, previously the solutions that were available, which were unmet needs, were things like affordability. I mean, were the solutions affordable in the old days when RSA was providing you with tokens and they were targeting the, on the enterprise? Uh, I would say no. Um, but if an enterprise, you had to pay it. They also... Were they, easy, were they easy to deploy, right? I mean, you need an easy deploy solution. You certainly don't want hardware other than your phone because it just becomes too inconvenient to use that people won't use them. Um, you have to be able to use it for multiple applications and multiple uses. 
Um, and it has to be overall, it has just has to be easy to use, right? It has to be easy to deploy and easy to use. So that's really setting the stage for what we're going to talk about. Um, I just wanted to do a quick overview of what we eSecurity Solutions does. We're in the we do um, uh, we, we do advisory services for governance and 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 security regulations and compliance with that. Uh, we do security risk assessments, which include testing of security um, such as penetration test vulnerability scans, phishing simulations, that kind of thing, as well as security reviews and gap analysis against a particular regulation that you're trying to be compliant with. Um, we have a uh, we have a bunch of, of security managed services that are 24 by 7 um, and managed detection and response solution, which integrates all that into one umbrella solution so that we can manage all the security and provide um, uh, detection and response training, security training, um, whether it be training of your people or, or training of your employees. Services and projects related to security, again, we're security focused. Um, security products themselves, uh, we, have a, uh, we have a core set of, of vendors like WatchGuard that, that are amazing and they continue to add new, uh, new solutions um, as they did recently when they bought Panda, uh, which is a leading uh, endpoint security solution provider in, in, in Europe. Um, and MFA, which is what uh, uh, Alexander is going to talk about, and then our overall compliance solutions that integrates the whole purpose for doing most of this stuff. So given all of that, um, I want to switch to uh, Alexander and let him – oh, I may have taken control of his keyboard. Hopefully not. No, I think we're good. <laughs> Alexander, you doing? You, you good? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom. Great introduction. And it's a really important information, really important data from the market. Uh, my name is Alex Cagnoni. Alexandre yeah, is my full name. Al Alex, Alex is how uh, people usually call me. I'm the director of authentication for WatchGuard Technologies. I've been in the market, in this MFA market, for almost 25 years. And some people might ask, hey, is MFA that old? It is that old, even a little bit more. So uh, I've seen a lot of stuff, and now we're, we're going through much more with the remote workforce, with everything that's going on. So um, with people working from home, uh, like Tom mentioned here. So I'm going to go through a, a, a few information. Uh, some are actually, some of the data was already shown by, by Tom. But I'm going to share some new information as well that we, we have from the market, the need for multi-factor authentication. What are the things that we need to do to re secure the remote workforce? Uh, some of the auth point, which is our multi-factor authentication solution, and some MFA use cases where you can apply uh, MFA. And I'm going to give you a quick auth point demo. So what's the user experience? I think it's always important to think about our users, how they're going to feel. Uh, when they use a solution like that? What difference does it make for them? And some case studies to finish. So let's start with the importance of multi-factor authentication and passwords, even though I'm in this, this market for a long time, passwords are a headache for users and for me as well. Uh, of course, it's impossible for me to remember all the different passwords that I have in my digital life. So. Uh, today, more than 80% of most of the attacks that happens in the internet uh, uh, worldwide are leveraging stolen or weak passwords. Leaked passwords, or sometimes they use some technique to attack, uh, attack companies and users. The number one malware in 2018, and it, it has been the, uh, in the top three uh, until today, still the top three, is the Mimikatz. Mimikatz is the password and credential stealers. For, for, from those, for those who don't, don't know too much about Mimikatz, it's a Trojan, it's a malware that when installed in the user's machine, uh, it will dump the Windows passwords, the passwords that were used to log in to this window computer. So it doesn't really matter if you have a very nice password with 50 characters and, and numbers and, and letters, it will dump, it will get your password if, you have, if you're infected with Mimikatz. Um, so 
Tom said, uh, was, was telling about the, the fact that 60% or more than 60% of the people are reusing passwords. And this is really a fact. Uh, most of the people will have two to five different passwords and they would, they would change between different applications depending on the password policy for each application. But they're, they're going to try to use the same password on most accounts. Uh, maybe change uh, a letter to from small caps uh, uh, or maybe adding numbers at the end and just changing the numbers, but people will try to use the same passwords all across all, across all of the applications. Uh, the estimated number of passwords stolen each week, about 1 million, is really an estimate. This changes a lot. You see a lot of news. There's a lot that we don't see, so it's, it's a large quantity. And this was before the, the COVID and everything. 92% of organizations will allow at some point in time remote workers. So securing the authentication or the access to, to the network uh, it's in the cloud is really critical. It's really important. Okay. Hang on, that's me. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. Uh, so uh, cred and credentials related breaches they're just growing. If we think about, we see that every day. Uh, just to give a quick example, last year we had a lot of uh, MSP attacks. MSP are those companies that uh, the, the manage manage security providers. They 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 manage or manage service providers. They uh, they manage the their customers. Sometimes or most of the times they connect to the uh, users' computers and servers. So what did the hackers do last year? They they tried to hack the technical guys from the MSPs. By hacking the technical guys, they thought, well, we're going to get access to uh, different companies, computers. So if I'm MSP, I'm managing, I don't know, 50 companies. Uh, with just By hacking just my password, they would be able to get access to 50 different companies and install ransomware. And this was a big one last year. And what could be the next credential-related attack? With all the things that we're seeing, uh, of course, VPN and remote access usage uh, is skyrocketing. It's not that it should. It, it is skyrocketing, like we're seeing with uh, um, conferencing tools like Zoom, like GoToMeeting. Uh, we just mentioned here in the beginning, there was some people were experiencing some problems joining this uh, GoToWebinar. And that's because there's a lot of people using that. Uh, so VPN and remote access, it's also something that will grow very, very fast, and the hackers will exploit the situation. They're gonna try to use different uh, phishing schemes, malware, use uh, fake news in the market, and try to use those to install malware, uh, use spam and, and install malware in, in the user's computers. Malware like ransomware, or it could be malware to steal your passwords and then uh, attack all of your digital accounts. And remote access, work access is quickly rising, of course, uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak. Like if you look at Zoom and, and Box, the, the way it's growing and other companies as well, the growth, and we're seeing that even with our difficulty to join those applications, uh, this is really booming and, and people are starting to, to use more and more all of those cloud-based tools. Uh, instead of using this uh, sometimes applications that are protected behind your your firewall and your network, we're using more and more those tools. We're not uh, having meetings in meeting rooms anymore. We're using Zoom and other conferencing tools to talk to each other. And now even those tools are being tar targeted. So I, I guess that most of you might have heard that uh, there was like a, 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 a problem with Zoom. There's a bug that would allow an attacker, for example, to uh, put a link. Um, you could put a link in the, the, the chat, the chat uh, uh, messaging from, from Zoom. And then if someone would click on that, this would install a malware that would use Zoom to uh, get the hashed passwords. So basically it's not an open passwords like Mimikatz, but still they could get the hashed passwords from Windows. And then once you have the hashed passwords, if the passwords are not that secure, you can use tools like Hashcat to crack those passwords. And just recently this week, um, it was announced that researchers found uh, more than 500,000 Zoom 
credentials from users in the dark web. So they, they started selling them. And guess what? It's, it, it wasn't because Zoom was breached. This was because uh, they tried, they used a te technique called credential stuffing. Basically, they were using passwords that were previously used by users and were uh, available through previous breaches. So for example, I was part of a breach or of a LinkedIn breach. I think it was in 2012. And I know they, st they tried to use my password. Uh, I didn't have a very good password at that time. Uh, shame on me. And, and they were able to use this password. Or they tried to use this password to connect to our servers uh, using SSH. Uh, I noticed that because we got the logs, but they were not able to, to do that because I had a, uh, thank God I had a better password, but this is how it all started. And, and now my password, my old password is in the dark web. Anyone can get. So what they did, they used those old passwords to try and with small variations to try and log in into Zoom users account. And guess what? More than 500,000 of those users are still using passwords that were exposed by previous breaches. So that's that's uh, that's how it happened, and that's how they they got into those uh, Zoom accounts. And there are increased risks uh, now that everyone is working from home. Uh, exposed company devices. The, the computers are not in the security of our company. People won't just buy very expensive firewalls. They won't buy, they, they won't install secure Wi-Fi at their homes. Maybe they're using just uh, the same passwords for everything. So the computers are exposed. People don't take very good care of their passwords. They have weak password, passwords, public or home Wi-Fi networks that are not protected. Uh, there could be breaches with that remote connection issues or even people in the same house that could potentially use the computer since uh, it's unprotected in someone's home. So now we're, we're being exposed or the employees and the companies being exposed to more things. So what can we do about that? So those are just some examples of what people were saying the last couple of years about the problems with identity, with credentials and everything. I, I'd like just to uh, emphasize two of those in here. The first one from the SVP of products from Webroot. Webroot was one of the products used by MSPs last year that was used to hack, uh, to get the credentials and then use Webroot to access uh, the computers of their customers and install ransomware. That's why uh, he came to the market and said, well, we decided it's time now to make two-factor authentication mandatory when logging in to our pro uh, products, given the, uh, how critical it, it is when you're using our products to manage your accounts. And another one, the Verizon Data Breach Report, I think is a great one because it takes um, breaches uh, worldwide. Uh, there's a lot of good information. And one of the considerations they did at the end is that it's really hard for you to define uh, what are the things you need to protect first. There are so many things. Now we have the network, we have the cloud, now we're remote. What, what can we do about that? So they said, well, just to FA everything you can. Protect everything you can. You're already paying for an MFA solution. Just try and protect all the applications if you can. So let's talk a little bit about securing the remote work, workforce. What are the things, what are the considerations we need to make when we're talking about protecting uh, those who are working now from home and protecting our companies as well? The first thing is the, we have to uh, make sure that unauthorized users cannot get access to, to your computers. So uh, people are now working from home. Maybe they have a big family. Maybe they have friends. Maybe they're not even respecting some restrictions that we're seeing in some countries or states. So we have people at home. You have the computer at home. It's not in the security uh, uh, security place, like the uh, physical place, like your, your network. So now we have to make sure that only the, the user, the right user is authorized to get into the computer and to the confidential information which is inside this, this, uh, this computer. And also eliminate all the risk of pa poor password habits the, uh, uh, associated with VPNs. 
if people are doing remote access, if they're using VPN tools or they are using any other remote access tool, uh, all it takes is really one user with a bad password. You don't need to hack all the users' passwords from the company. If you have 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 people or employees working from home, all it takes is just one user with a bad password or one user with a keylogger or a Mimikatz Trojan installed in their computer or even one user sharing the, their password, maybe through a phishing attack, maybe through a social engineering attack over the phone. So um, it's really important to protect all the users when doing a remote access and also provide secure access to the essential information uh, applications. Like, like Tom mentioned, a lot of people are now using cloud applications. We're using conferencing tools. We, we're using tools like Box and, and Dropbox to exchange confidential files. We have people using Office 365. So they, you need to protect the cloud applications as well. Uh, in, if possible, without requiring any additional hardware and, and software. So that's uh, really important. And we can do that. We can help protect the company credentials by using something like push-based authentication, which I'm going to show. I'm going to make a quick demo for everyone uh, that haven't uh, uh, used something like that, uh, that could see as well and see how it works so but basically something that can be used to verify the user identity really protect the credentials of the user if someone's trying to use the username and password the password was stolen the user will get a push message and they have to validate that push they can approve or deny the access to a protected uh, resource protected application and by the way uh, this is what we told our customers. We had a few customers saying, hey, we saw this thing about Zoom. And what we say, we said, well, we already have an integration guide. Uh, we integrate with Zoom. So if you're using OffPoint with Zoom, if you're when you log in, at least from your computer the first time, if you log in using MFA, then you're protected. You don't have to worry. Just tell your users that if they receive a push out of the blue, you're not accessing Zoom but you receive a push, that's because probably someone stole their credentials, tell them to deny and change their password. Okay, so very important thing. And let me, let's talk a little bit about OffPoint and some of the MFA use cases. What are some of the things we can protect before going to the, to the demo? So OffPoint is a cloud-based solution. So we're an application running on WatchGuard Cloud. WatchGuard Cloud is a multi-tier, multi-platform uh, uh, application uh, in the cloud. So, and, and OffPoint runs, all the management is done through this platform. Basically, it's where you configure the applications, where you configure the identities when they're trying to access and we protect when they're trying to access cloud applications. If you're trying to access your network using a VPN, a remote access tool, if you're, trying to protect, for example, your web portal, you have an application, you want to protect the users when logging into your service. Uh, the remote access to servers, for example, RDP, uh, endpoints, and so forth. And we do that using our mobile app, our free mobile app you just download. Uh, you can also, we also support uh, hardware tokens if you still want to deploy that. If someone, for some reason, doesn't want to use the, the app, you can still use the hardware token. And we're adding more and more risk-based information like safe locations. We do have a, uh, something that protects the token from being cloned, which is called the mobile DNA. This is very unique about us. So it's a cloud application. It's easy to implement. Even if you're now working from home, already working from home, it's really easy to implement. Uh, basically, uh, if you can, just use the OffPoint app. It's a mobile app. Uh, one of the applications that you use is push and why push is so important and you're going to see from the demo because first of all for the user it's user friendly it's secure authentication with just one touch approval you don't have to type in uh, one-time passwords for those who use or have used uh, mfa in the past like the hardware tokens you have to put your password and then the the one-time password after that uh, with push, you don't have to do that. Just put your password, you receive a push message, and then 
uh, it allows you to access the protected resource. So you have information about who's trying to authenticate, what time, uh, where is this coming from, which, which country, which region, which area, which city, uh, which browser it's being used, what, uh, what's the operating system, and which resource the user is trying to access. So if that's you, you approve. If that's not you, you should deny and block the attack. So it's available as a mobile app. It's, you can have multiple tokens, you can personalize, you can protect it with pin and biometrics. It's free to download. You can even add your third party social media tokens for free if you want as well. Some of the, the applications or the things that you can do with this mobile app, you have the what we call the online uh, authentication, which is using push. Online means that you need data connection uh, within your phone in order to authenticate. QR code based authentication, it's an offline method. We're going to see how it works. And OTP, which changes from uh, the password, will change from time to time. And some of the common use cases, again, is the uh, protecting the employee PC and server logon, Windows, uh, Mac, and so forth. Single sign on to cloud applications, remote access, and we integrate with all the firewalls in the market, privilege, user access, and compliance. And I'd like to mention, and you're going to see as well in the demo, that web single sign-on to cloud applications is one of the best things to implement when you're implementing an MFA solution. Because really, uh, if you have cloud applications that support uh, what we call the SAML protocol, SAML, S-A-M-L, it creates a trust relationship between the cloud application and the web single sign-on portal, which means that instead of having the user remember the passwords for Office 365, Salesforce, Zoom, and so forth, all they need to do is remember the network password. They just authenticate once with the network password and an MFA, and then get single sign-on access to all of those applications. So for the user, they don't have to memorize the credentials for every single account like they did before, which is great. And even for the admins, because now, they don't have to worry about resetting passwords from different applications. They just add the user. The user doesn't even know what's the password for, for those cloud applications. It's just about creating this trust relationship. And it's important to sell the value to your users. Uh, when you implement web single sign-on, I think it's a good way to implement because you're giving something uh, additional for your users to protect their credentials, their identity. So even if they were part of a breach like this one with Zoom, they're still being protected with mode effect authentication. And you're getting, uh, with web single sign-on, you're just throwing away your business cloud passwords. You don't have to remember, you don't have to change from every six months or create different passwords. Uh, just authenticate once and then you, uh, you access all of those applications with single sign-on. And you can also protect uh, your own social media applications as well. So let's see how it works. And you can actually experience it through our website. Uh, there's some walkthroughs, so you don't have to install anything. It's just like a, a guided walkthrough. We have the management portal demo. You can enroll and just see a sample of a management interface. You can have an authentication demo. You will download our app. It's going to uh, help you authenticating two different applications. You don't have to set up uh, anything else than your phone. And then you can try it. You can get also a trial. Okay. So let's take a look how it works. As you can see here in, in the left side, this, this is my phone. I'm using a software just to mirror my, my phone screen. Uh, and I have also here uh, the applications to the right that I'm going to show working with uh, OffPoint. So to the, to the left is my OffPoint app. You're seeing a lot of tokens in here. That's because I use for the company. I have test, uh, test accounts. I have a lot of different accounts. Most of the users will have one or two tokens. And at the end, they can have also their personal tokens. We call it third-party tokens because it, they're, they're uh, personal tokens like my Gmail uh, account is protected with OTP. My LinkedIn account is protected with OTP as well. So you can use the, uh, the OffPoint mobile app also to protect your personal accounts. And you can protect, for example, you can see some of the tokens are protected here. If I 
put my finger, it's going to ask me to validate using biometrics or PIN. I usually use biometrics just because it's easier. I don't have to remember the password. So very simple application you can personalize, put your pre preferred picture or label. And the first thing I'm going to show is how you can use it for web single sign-on. So anyone that's using OffPoint, any company that's using OffPoint will get their own URL. You don't have to install ser web servers. You don't have to buy certificates. We're going to give you the, your own URL. It's going to be offpoint.watchguard.com slash the name of your company. It's going to be the personal URL that can be used by your users, your employees. And the way you log in, you're going to use your username or email address. And then it's going to check first if this user exists within this tenant, within this uh, company. If you exist, then you're going to type in the password. And by the way, I'm using my corporate password here and, and, and my email address. So this is a, a really live as an employee, uh, a WatchGuard employee. This is what I get. And I see here I have three authentication options. I'm going to use push, which is the, the, best, the best way to authenticate the best solution to authenticate. And as you can see, I received the push request. Uh, this is uh, my uh, email address, where uh, the time from the location it's coming from. I'm based near Lisbon in Portugal. I'm using a Chrome browser on a Windows machine, and I'm trying to access the access portal. If that's OK, I'm going to prove and get access to all the applications that I'm entitled to access. And as a user, I thank God or thank the IT guys in WatchGuard that I don't have to remember the password for all of those applications. I use those applications like Salesforce, for example, and I don't have to um, uh, type in my username. I don't have to type in my password. It just goes and logs in me in automatically, okay? I'm not gonna show here, it's confidential information, but all the other applications like Rike is an application we use a lot for uh, marketing applications, you can also use and log in automatically. So it establishes this trust relationship between the, the web single sign-on page and the uh, application itself. So great example of uh, a use that people will love, employees will love as well. A second thing I wanted to share in here is how you can protect the computer. So I have a, a VM with a Windows 10 machine, uh, which is protected with what we call the OffPoint agent. For Windows, we have it for Mac OS as well. Uh, for the user, it doesn't look like it changed too much. Still my user and password. Uh, the difference in here is once I type in my username and password, I'm going to get my mode effect authentication page. And then I can authenticate using push, for example. And of course, I need to, I need to have... Um, internet access in my phone in order to use push and approve and and then get access to my computer no skip for now i don't want to do anything in this this computer in here okay so i get access to my computer now you could ask what uh, what about if i'm on an airplane and i i guess a lot of people here are not in the airplane on, on these days but uh, let's say you're in a hotel you you don't have maybe you don't have data access in your computer you don't have data access on your phone or you're in the airplane you need to access the computer so this is when you're going to use what we call the offline authentication so we have two options here we have one-time password which basically you type in the one-time password from the, your token in here or you can use the most secure option which is the QR code challenge response why it's more secure because otp some people might give away over the phone or someone might uh, uh put in a fake website and and they try to use at the same time once you put in this website with this one we created an encrypted qr code which is the challenge that only my phone can read so what i have to do in this case remember i don't have internet connection so uh i i have to read manually how do i do that there's a qr code reader here that's used to activate tokens but also for this type of authentication i'm going to click in here just put next to my qr code and then i get the information if i'm trying to log in to this computer at this time so now what i have to do again i don't have internet connection so i'm just going to type in the response and with that 
log into the computer. So uh, very easy to protect. So if you lock the computer, you can still protect your computer if someone has have your credentials. And this works for remote desktop applications as well. Okay. And finally, uh, what I wanted to, to show in here, maybe a quick experience uh, with VPN. I'm not going to connect to the VPN because I, I don't want to lose, uh, lose you guys for, for a moment here. Uh, but I'm going to show what happens if my password was stolen. So let's say someone stole my password. Maybe I'm using, I'm a Zoom user. I'm using the same password for a long time and uh, I'm, I use the same password for my company as well. So they, they figure out what's my password. I'm going to type it in here and they try to connect. So an attacker will try to connect to the network using a VPN. You could use any VPN solution, doesn't matter. But I received in here a request to access the corporate uh, using VPN. And I'm not, I'm not trying to connect now, I'm talking to you guys. So what happens? I should deny the access. Since I denied, and here it says authentication attempt denied, the attacker will receive authentication failed error. They're gonna think that maybe the password is wrong, so maybe I should just dump this password. And for the user, they know that uh, their password was compromised, it's time to change the password. And you can even create a notification uh, for the IT admins so they know that a user uh, rejected a push, which means that probably it wasn't the user, so um, they have to talk to the user to make sure that uh, they did that on purpose because the, the password was compromised. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show in terms of a demo uh, of the product. Now let's get back here to the presentation. So basically we saw web single sign-on to cloud applications. We saw Windows login protection on a Windows machine, could be a Mac OS machine, and also how you could block an attempt to a VPN connection using stolen credentials. And finally, a few case studies I wanted to, to share with you guys as well. It's uh, the first one from United States, Die Cut Stickers, great company providing stickers since 2002. Uh, interesting company. Uh, they had some challenge, very modern company. Uh, they had some challenge about the growth of the secure of, of employees working from home, so remote access uh, workers. So before the COVID, and this is from last year, before the COVID, they already uh, were having a lot of remote workers. So they really needed to secure the access to the company and secure the, the company assets. So they deployed OffPoint for all the employees. They, the main use case was the VPN uh, access with the with a Firebox firewall. And why Offpoint? They said, well, it was simple, se secure solution, and very cost effective. Secure and robust, robust without breaking the bank. I like that. It's a good, it's a good point. Anyway, uh, another example, Madnet in Greece. Madnet is it's basically a company that provides uh, benef uh, um, healthcare solutions for healthcare providers and patients. They they try to to, to be the guy in the middle trying to manage what the best things like hospitals, doctors, and mediate all this uh, type of relationship between patients and healthcare companies. Their challenges, the patient records were in three different locations. Uh, the access, it's remote access, but GDPR was coming. They said, well, we have to protect the access. We have to protect uh, patient records. So they started the deployment with OffPoint for 500, 500 people, anyone that would have remote access to their applications, some employees and some providers, mostly healthcare providers. And now the phase two, they have also a web portal. If you go to their website, there's a portal for customers. They're gonna use our APIs, which is already included in the package. They're gonna use the APIs and add MFA for that as well. Why OffPoint? They said it was easy to implement. They had a POC with different companies. They said it was really easy to implement, great partner, uh, fast responses. So everything worked seamlessly. And finally, one from Japan, Miyazaki University, very large uh, public university in Japan, uh, uh, 10,000 users, 7,500 uh, 7, students, 
2,500 employees, and the main challenges was to were, uh, provide a protection for Office 365. They had issues with identity theft. They had uh, two issues uh, with that, and there was uh, uh, from from the uh, students' organization, not the students, but the university organizations in Japan. They demanded a solution from University of Miyazaki, and they started evaluating MFA solutions. They also evaluated Azure MFA. They thought it was the, the support was really bad. They couldn't get the information they needed. And with us, they get they got the 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 device and the user facing applications in their own language. We have it translated to 13 different languages. And it was the integration was very easy with for the VPN project with F5 but also with Office 365. So they deployed for all the 10,000 users and they said it was very simple to implement, okay? So just to, to finish my presentation and go to questions if you have any, I just wanted to uh, reiterate here what's WatchGuard. WatchGuard is a 25 year old company uh, started with UTM, we're really strong in network security, then secure Wi-Fi, multi-factor authentication, and now we are uh, adding more and more applications to protect your endpoints. So we're really known in the market for the network security. We are already now really known for the secure Wi-Fi and MFA since we launched, launched in 2018. It's growing really, really fast because like Tom, Tom mentioned, it has to be simple to implement, it has to be simple to use. And we also recently announced Panda acquisition. Panda is a worldwide uh, company. They make endpoint security solutions. And this is our commitment with our customers to extend the simplified security from network to endpoint. With that, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, eSecurity Solutions, for inviting me, Tom, Ali, uh, for inviting me again uh, for this webinar. And now I think we're open to questions, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize too, the reason that we watch, that we work with WatchGuard and why we continue to work with WatchGuard is because they are um, an amazing company in terms of their security. They're very cost-effective solutions and they continue to add great new solutions that um, like the endpoint security that they've just added using the the panda solution and if you look at if you deep dive into the panda solution you'll see that this is a world-class solution that just doesn't happen to be um, very well distributed in the united states and we're going to do everything we can to help them change that um, but we know that they'll offer that as both a great endpoint and an edr and an endpoint solution as well as an integrated solution with their firewalls and their mfa um, so that they have, you know, a really great end-to-end -end solution. So um, MFA is a good example of that, and and uh, MFA was a, an acquisition about two years ago that um, Alexander uh, spearheaded, and uh, we can offer that to our to you as customers as a license or as a managed service. Uh, the managed service includes the license. So there's two ways for you guys to consume that. Um, in terms of of uh, uh, the kind of things that we also can do to help you out is, you know, with all of these different areas of risk that we have that we're taking on by having people work from home, um, we can talk to you and work with you on all the other the areas of security, such as securing the home office, securing your cloud applications, um, secure communications, data security, backup disaster recovery, security monitoring, and, and MDR, as well as the MFA solution. So. Uh, with all of that, um, I don't know if there's any questions. Actually, I don't see any questions being answered. So I guess maybe we we provided all the answers that anybody needed. But um, but we're certainly available. We'll send you a copy. We'll send out a, a copy of the of the uh, presentation as a video um, uh, to you, um, and we'll also follow up with you to see how we can help you. If anybody's got any other questions, though, um, please enter it into the box. And since I don't see any, um, I'm going to terminate the, uh, uh, the, the webinar and, and thank you all for coming and, and have a great day. Thank you all.